Hey guys, we are back with some more Wolfsburg Wolves franchise mode. And in this one, we are going to do a commentary third period in the first game of the season. But first, we have a few things to do. First of which is we are going to be calling up Kyle Wood and Fazliev from the minors just as injury replacement players. So we will do that right now. And next thing we need to do is we need to sign an extra forward for the minors. Because if you take a look here, if we go best lines in the AHL, it will put Akim Wolf, who is a defenseman, at forward. So we need to sign one of our prospects. And I believe the only prospect forward we have who is unsigned at the moment is yeah Posse Pedersen, who we got out of the past draft, who we also tried tried to trade for one of the players who we traded for, but uh, that's not how that worked out. So uh, Posse Pedersen is now assigned and under our own control, but we do need to do one more thing, and that would be fill out the cap space as we have 21 million, or well, 20 million now in cap space. So I would say we signed someone for about 12 mil just to just so that we have breathing room in both directions in the in terms of the cap ceiling and the cap floor. And I would say we need a backup goaltender because, well, not a backup goaltender, but a third string goaltender because you have Demko and Schneider who are amazing. But if one of them goes down, then you need, of course, a third string to back things up there. So we will start by overall here. And I'm not really looking to get a starter as we already have two of those. But there's not much after that. So I guess we'll just go after this Opilka guy. 77 overall. We're going to give him a one-way deal worth thir like 12 or 13 million. So you are getting paid, my man. Simply to ride the bench for the majority of the time. Actually, not even the bench. Literally just stay at home <laughs> and watch the games on TV or something. And, and come to practice occasionally, you know, or wh whenever we need you. So literally just get paid. 12.5 million for one year <laughs> to say it to stay at home <laughs> all right so there you go there is our uh, goaltender who will occasionally fill in if by chance Demko or Schneider gets injured and but he's the, the main purpose he's serving of course is to fill out the cap so now uh, we will skip right ahead of the preseason as there's not really much to be concerned about there. As long as we get this guy under control. Yes, we do. And there you go. So I'm just going to make sure all the AHL lines are good to go. Uh, as they should have been in the last one. But uh, now that we've made a couple of roster moves, we will have to change things around a little bit. So... Let me just do this real quick, and then we will get to the commentary third period. All right, here we go. Third period versus the Pittsburgh Penguins, and we are currently up 4-1 after two. So here we go. Joel Farabee takes it in for Pittsburgh, and Jones will get it up to Ajo. And by the way, the goals scored so far in this game. In the first, Jones scored first, and then Ajo. And then in the second, Malkin and Homer. So, uh, the majority of our stars already on the board in this game. Let's hope that we get a couple more here. Maybe in the third. Homer receives that pass from Miller. Homer does a dangle, but intercepted by McKinnon. McKinnon finds Latang. Latang with the shot. Blocked by Thatcher Demko. McKinnon. And, oh, he centers that one. But a good save by Demko as he holds on. Second line out there now, Mayer, Point, and Furland out there against Kadri, Crosby, and Gensel. Dahan up to Zhamnov. To Mayer. Mayer into the zone, finds Point, who finds Furland with the shot, and Murray will glove that and cover up with 13.55 remaining in the third. Second line still out there. Come on, Point, win that face off. Come on, ref, drop the puck. There you go. And, all right, I'll, I'll consider that a win. Mayer with the shot. Puck goes into the corner where McCaution has it. Up to Crosby for Gensel. Gensel into the zone for Kadri. Back to Gensel. Gensel with the shot, and Crosby looking for the rebound in the corner now 
for Gensel. And he tried to get it over to, I believe, that is number 43 for Pittsburgh. But Furland will take it up for Wolfsburg. Furland dumps in. Met by McCaution. McCaution takes it from behind his net and gets it to Kadri. And he circles back. Finds Osterley. Osterley gets knocked down by a Wolf. And Mayer up the in, into the zone. Finds Pearson with the shot. And he scores Pablo Pearson with his first goal as a Wolfsburg Wolf. Number 18 gets on the board with 19. 9.17 remaining in the third. And he puts us up 5-1. to one, The worst hunt. <laughs> it's first of all of the season. Very nice. Let's see that again. 70-18. to 18, And he just wires that one. And what a shot. So third line out there. Malkin, Pearson, and Robertson out there against Wood, Rask, and McGinn. Zamnov to Robertson. Robertson into the zone. Robertson looking at his options. Goes back to the point for Zamnov. Pearson has the puck again. Decides to shoot it again. Going for two. But McGinn takes it out. And gets it to Miles Wood. Wood stops. Finds Kepney. Kepney with the shot that blocks off of... I believe that is Zamnov. And Malkin takes it out of the zone for Wolfsburg. 6.20 remaining in the third. Malkin tries to get it deep and gets it as far as Kempney. But taken out of the zone and Wood will try to get by Zamnov and met by Staples. Staples, the 18-year-old rookie, right out of the draft, playing in game one of his career. Miller has the puck now for Wolfsburg, but takes the shot and Murray with the save. He throws it out to Kempney, as that was kind of dangerous with Homer lurking. However, they got out of it safely. As that is going to be a power play for the Pittsburgh Penguins coming up. What do we have? That is a trip on JT Miller. As I didn't quite see what happened there. Uh, oh, yeah, that's a... Yeah. Yeah, you can't do that, JT. You can't do that. All right, so we're going to see our penalty kill in action here. Pajot and Pearson out there against Sprong, McKinnon, and Crosby. McKinnon wins that back for Latang. Latang takes the shot. And nice save by Demko. Kuleshov has McKinnon pinned along the boards. Mata for Sprong. Sprong with the backhander. And that was not a strong enough backhand as it is cleared with no issues whatsoever for the Wolfsburg Wolves. As McKinnon has it and takes it into the Wolfsburg zone for Crosby. Crosby finds Latang on the point. Latang back down low for Crosby. Crosby tries to center that, but taken by Pajot and cleared. With 2.23 remaining in the third and 1.23 remaining in the power play. Crosby to McKinnon. McKinnon over to Sprong. Sprong into the zone for Pittsburgh. Finds Crosby. Crosby finds Latang. Down low behind the net for McKinnon. Back over to Sprong. Sprong circling around. Finds Mata. Crosby to Sprong for Latang. Latang with the shot. That went just wide of the net. And Crosby hit the side of the net as well. Crosby for Sprong from Mata. And McKinnon tried to get that, but Jones clears at 200 feet for Wolfsburg with 146 remaining in the third and 46 seconds remaining in the Pittsburgh power play. McKinnon has it now back in the zone. Sprong finds McKinnon. Back over to Sprong with the shot, and that almost got through Demko, but Wolfsburg will clear that once again. As Pittsburgh looks to get something going here on this power play. Gensel. Into the zone. Almost went offside. Good good job to stay onside. Latang with the shot. Cleared by Stahlberg. With 1.15 remaining in the third. Mata back for the Penguins. Circles around his net. Finds Gansel. Gansel into the zone. Gansel for Latang. Latang with the shot blocked in front. McKinnon and Demko will glove that one right in front of the net with 57.9 seconds remaining. First line out there again, Miller, Aho, and Homer against Kadri, Crosby, and Gensel. Zamnov with 53 seconds remaining in the third. Takes it up for Wolfsburg. Back to the point for Aho. Aho, the captain, and he scores from long range. Jorg Aho, the newest captain of the Wolfsburg Wolves, gets on the board once again. 
as his second goal of the game. And that C looks very nice on him. His, his home country. And it is now 6-1. Wolfsburg. Well, the pass from Zhamnov and then Aho and just, just blast that from the point and what a goal that was. I believe there was, yeah, there was some traffic out in front there, but it, he just straight up beats Murray and that was, that was a very nice shot. Placed it perfectly and it really, it really doesn't get much better than that. Aho from Zhamnov and Dahan with less than a minute remaining in the third as there is no hope here for Pittsburgh, but they can at least make it respectable as Crosby took that shot. Gensel has it again, but blocked in front. Osterley to Mikoshin. Mikoshin down low to Kadri. To Mikoshin again. Mikoshin has that, and that is nice defense by Maddox Homer. Miller into the zone. Dumps in. 20 seconds remaining. No need for any offense here, but they're looking to embarrass them here. Aho to Miller to Vertanen. Vertanen whiffs on a shot, but it gets to Miller. Miller has the puck again. And looking at his options, finds DeHaan. DeHaan with five seconds remaining, takes the shot, deflected. But that'll be all she wrote. Okay, so a solid first game of the regular season. 6-1 to one win against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Let's go the rest of the month and see what happens. So I'm very interested to see how our rookies perform, specifically Zanetti and Staples. But another interesting thing in this season is going to be the lack of experience on our top four and top six defensive pairs. As with three out of the four of them being 20 or younger, you can bet that there's going to be some at least early on, there will be uh, some issues there. But I, I do think that all of them, that being said, are NHL ready. So we're going to see what happens here in the early part of the season. Uh, I'm not expecting too much, but it appears as of right now, we are on a tear 5-1-1 one, one to start out the season. I mean, very nice. Definitely cannot complain. Uh, I've definitely seen worse, so <laughs> you know what? I'll take it. Uh, no, I don't want to go best lines for Berlin. Y'all yeah, put replace Baronek with Walker. There you go. All right. So back to the NHL now, and I believe it should stop on Calgary. No, it won't. Uh, it'll stop on Buffalo. But we go six, one, and two in the first nine games of the season. So solid start. No reason to change anything right now. We'll just check out the points anyway. And see what everything's looking like. We'll also check the team stats just to make sure that everything is clicking at the moment. So Yorgaho, the captain, with 10 points in his first nine games as the Wolfsburg captain. Can't complain there. He's looking solid so far. Gino with 10 points so far. So glad we brought him back. He's clearly a, a, a necessary veteran presence for this team. And Todd Mayer with 9 points. In nine games so far. He's officially a first line four, but but the game could still technically be lying to us. So, so we're gonna keep him on the second line for right now, especially since everything's clicking. You know, you you don't want to change that. Seth Jones with eight points, Kulishov with six, uh, JT Miller with five assists, Pablo Pearson with four goals so far. So looking pretty good is Pearson. Maddox Homer only with four points, but you know what? He's uh, he's on a line with Aho. He's on a line with Miller. So, I mean, he's bound to get going at some point. If he doesn't, then, you know, we'll, we'll change something up. But for right now, we're winning. So, Homer, he's an 87 overall. I think he can handle the first line. Even though it says he's a second liner, again, that could be the game lying to it, lying to us. He may actually be a first liner. And Frederick Stahlberg on the fourth line with three points so far. Zanetti with three points as well he's actually it says here's he's a third checking line forward but again we're gonna wait a little bit especially since everything's working so why change something when it's working and calvin Hahn with three assists so far Braden point with three assists as well uh, furland with two pajo with two jamnov with two is an official uh, 
top four defenseman, and he's got that low elite potential. So I, I think that was a really good move there. Jason Robertson, 81. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we already knew that, but two points. And then Fosleev, Wood, and Staples. And Vertanen, without any points. However, Wood and Fosleev obviously have not played up to this point. Staples, I would like to see a little bit more out of, but he's currently a top six defenseman role, so we are going to leave him there. We're not going to send him down to juniors. Hanu Vertanen, minor top two. I mean, again, it's working right now, so as long as it's working, I'm not going to send anyone down. And I feel like Vertanen, this is a big year for him because he's spent the past two years in the AHL as a minor top two. And I feel like he needs to take that next step now, which is the NHL. So overall, not too bad. There are a few players who I would like to see get going, like Braden Point, uh, Maddox Homer. But you know what? We're winning as a team, so that doesn't really matter too much at the moment. So Schneider, funny thing, is that has actually gotten more games than Demko. Not as good of a save percentage as he's had in the past. 908, but you know what? I'll give him the benefit of the doubt because last season he was in the exact same position. He, I, I believe he started the season with a 905, and he made his way all the way up to, what was it, 924 or something like that? Yeah, 925. So benefit of the doubt for Schneider. And then Thatcher Demko in the four games that he's played so far, been very solid. 947 save percentage. No shutouts just yet, but it looks like we're pretty solid defensively. So I really can't complain there. Now, team stats. Let's just make sure that the penalty kill and power play is doing what it's supposed to do. And as long as that is the case, then we will continue the simulation. And, and really, even if it's not the case, we'll probably still continue the simulation, just given that we're winning. And goals for per game, 3.22. Can't complain there. Goals against per game, 2.33. Also, can't complain there. Power play. That is fantastic. 29.6. We'll leave it as is. Penalty kill. You know, it's actually better than I expected. 82.8. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll definitely take it. And we already have a short-handed goal. So, I'm not touching the thing. Let's just keep going. I would say we can go... We'll go one more month. We'll see what happens with all our rookies and all that. And as long as, really, as long as we can keep winning, we'll just, we'll keep simulating. So a 5-2 win over Buffalo, 5-0 win against Minnesota. I, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing at the moment, boys. Just keep it going. Yeah, I mean, not too much to complain about right now. There's a shootout loss, so we still got a point out of it. And yeah, only one regulation loss so far. I mean, you talk about a weak defensive core. I don't know. I mean, I think personally that, the fact that we have Kuleshov and Jones doing the majority of the heavy lifting, and then, of course, Demko and Schneider both in net. I don't know. I think that's that's really making up for a lack of depth at defense. But here, Maddox Homer with a mild concussion until, I believe, mid-November is what I saw. So we're unfortunately going to have to get Faz leaving here, which, uh, you know, <laughs> obviously we're not going to have him on the second line. And I guess we'll get, I don't want to take, I don't want to break up that third line. I feel like it's been good. Yeah, Gino with 16 points so far with Pablo Pearson and Jason Robertson. So you know what? I'll get, I'll get one of the fourth liners up to the second line. I, I don't think it's going to be Zanetti. Yeah, he's a depth forward. Pajot or Stahlberg. I'll get Stahlberg up here. We'll see what he can do. I'm not going to really bother. How long is it until Mayor gets back? Oh, hold on. Edit lines, extras, three on three, point. Homer, Miller, Malkin, Aho. I'll put Stahlberg there as well. I think it was like the 17th, wasn't it? That's not too long from now. So there's a win against Vegas, 6 nothing loss against Jersey. Uh, New York. Let's see. We have a 2-1 win. All right, there you go. So, as long again, as long as we're winning, I'm not going to change anything up. All right, here we go. Yep, <laughs> 17. That's what I thought. That is what I thought. So, we'll take Fazleaf back out and get Mayer in. And we'll switch these guys up. 
and we'll just make sure everything is the way it's supposed to be. And I believe, yeah, we'll just get Mayor back on here, and that should be, we should be good to go. Yep, there you go. All right. So back to the simulation now, Chicago. That would be a 7 nothing win. Way to go, boys. Yeah, let's just keep going. There's no reason to stop. I mean, 13-2-3. That's insane for this team. It really is. If we can keep this up, I mean, I, I have no <laughs> issues whatsoever. So there's a loss against Edmonton. You never like to see that. But then you have a 3-2 win against Columbus. 3 nothing win against Nashville. Just keep going. <laughs> Honestly, just keep it going. Colorado, not looking too good. Liam Kirk will just do replace player for that. 2 nothing or 2-1 loss against Colorado, so... That's a bit unfortunate. I don't remember ever taking Gino out. Yeah, no, he was just a minor injury, so we'll keep going here. Vancouver, 5-1 win. All right, there you go. So 16-4-3 to start out the season. Definitely much better than last season. It's clear that the offense is going at this point and that, honestly, we're much we're much better off without Panarin at the moment. Yorgaho, the captain, apparently is second-line forward, so... Usually at this point in the season, the roles are accurate, so I, I I don't know what to make of that, but I don't know. I, I see him as a first-line forward. He's an 87 overall. He's getting over a point per game, so why not? And Gino. Gino has kept up this pace all year so far. 23 points in 23 games. What a beast. Even at, even at what is he, 36, 37 years of age. Is he a, oh, he's a bottom six forward, unfortunately, but you know what? He's still getting points, so I'm not going to complain. Seth Jones. He's got that top four defenseman role. So I have no idea what's going on here with the roles. I feel like it's still kind of lying to us, just given Jones's overall. <laughs> but uh, you know what? He's getting points. 17 in 23 for a defenseman. And then Todd Mayer with 15 points in 21 games. He's also now a second line forward, so I, I kind of figured. Uh, Kuleshov, that's good to know that he's still a top two defenseman. 15 points in 23 games. Maddox Homer, looks like he's gotten going as of recent. 14 points in 23 games. I believe that was at, what was that at before? Four points in uh, nine games? So that's 10 points over the past 14 games. So that's not too shabby. He's definitely picked up the pace. Pablo Pearson with 12 points in 23 games. JT Miller with 12 points. Point with 11. I wish he was going a little bit more, but... Yeah, well, again, as long as we're winning, I don't care who's getting the point scoring. Jason Robertson with 9 so far. Calvin Hahn with 9. Zamnov with 7. Uh, Zanetti with 6. He's an 80 overall now, so that's good. It looks like he's grown there on the fourth line. Stahlberg with five, Pajot with five, Furlan with four, Staples with one, and he's still at top six defenseman, so we won't send him down, and Hanu Vertanen with one assist so far, and then Fazliev in the two games he played, didn't do much, he had minus one. Let's take a look at some of the basic stats here as well, so point, 56.4 on faceoffs, not too shabby, Pajo 53.7, Aho 48.4, wish he was doing better. Pablo Pearson, 48%, wish he was doing better there as well. But for the most part, can't complain. Hits, Miller with 54, Aho with 43, Jones 41, Furland, Homer, Pearson, Stahlberg, and Vertanen, and Robertson all over a hit per game. Really can't complain there. And... You know what? We're winning, so I'm not going to really look too much into the giveaways and takeaways. It looks like, for the most part, everyone's doing what they need to. Uh, Hanu Vertanen's a little brutal there. 25-5. to five. <laughs> But, uh, you know what? He's not costing us at the moment. And Thatcher Demko. 956 save percentage. Unreal. <laughs> 10 wins in 14 games. 3 shutouts. I'm glad we got this guy as a successor to Corey Schneider because, man, he is so far <laughs> so good. Worth it. Worth the uh, $9.6 million that we paid him in free agency. I mean, I know uh, for the most part, free agents, you know, they don't always work out, but 
here Demko is a much different story. And we've, we've had success with our free agent goaltender s- signings so far in this GM mode. I mean, Corey Schneider for us last year and the year before even, 924, 925. And now with Thatcher Demko, 956 in 14 games. I don't know. I feel like <laughs> we at this point, we don't need any drafted goaltenders. And plus, we always have, we always have Callie Rodin who is in the minors, 20 years of age, 71 overall. Even if he doesn't pan out, I'd say we're good with Demko for the rest of the GM mode. So let's go, I would say one more month. We can, I mean, we're <laughs> we're looking good as of right now. We're first in our division. Really not too much to worry about. So yeah, let's go up to the game against Florida here on January 1st. And we'll see what happens this month. So we'll, we'll see how this young team is able to respond to uh, the, the length of the NHL season. So, oh, Yorgaho with an MCL sprain until January 20th. That's a long way from now. That is, whew, yeah, that's about, what, 50 days? Because we're only in December right now. Yeah. Whew, okay, <laughs> that hurts. All right, so point up to the first line. I would say Pajot up to the second with Mayer and Furland. And then Stahlberg, Zanetti, and it's going to have to be, for right now anyways, <laughs> Faz leave. Yeah, we'll get, is Stahlberg good at faceoffs? He's got an 80 for faceoff. Yeah, we'll put him in the middle, see what he can do. Uh, Zanetti, I hope that Faz leave being on their line doesn't, hurt Zanetti's development and let's check on our defensemen so far I mean Staples is still a 79 but as long as he is getting some development in that is all I care about I mean again this year if we don't make the playoffs it's not a big deal because for the most part this is just a development year but if we do make the playoffs it'd be nice (laughs) it'd be really nice for the uh, for the future growth of these guys and now, of course, uh, as we lose our captain, Yorgaho, we are not in a good <laughs> position at the moment. As we have lost him for well over a month at this point. And he is our leading point scorer. So that is never a good thing. I mean, a 2-1 win over Tampa. You can't complain about that. So as long as we can keep a good ratio here while the captain is out... I would say we'll still be in a good spot for the playoffs. But I'm not I'm not going to go making any ridiculous trades because that obviously hurt us last year. And it, it's just it's just whatever happens happens for this season, I think. So I mean but for the most part at the moment anyway, we seem to be good, doing a good job uh, of scoring even without Yorgaho. So yeah, I mean, 24, 8, and 3. For how young this team is, the run that we're going on right now is is definitely impressive. <laughs> Especially without Yorgaho. With with Fazli even there instead. So we're, we're at January 1st. We're halfway through the season now. And we are still the best team in the Central Division. I mean, we went from missing the playoffs to now being, what is that? Like 15 points ahead of the Winnipeg Jets and even the St. Louis Blues. I mean, we have a we have a weak division this year for sure. The only two good teams at the moment in the Central Division are the Wolfs- your Wolfsburg Wolves and the Minnesota Wild. So, really, no concerns here. And Gino keeps tearing it up, even in the absence of of Yorgaho. On the third line, at thirty seven years of age, Gino Malkin is tearing it up. So I don't know what we have going there on the third line with with Malkin, you know, Pearson, and Robertson, but they seem to have some tremendous chemistry. Yeah, and, and the funny thing about that is Gino has 32 points, and then Pablo Pearson only has 17, and Robertson only has 15. So it's it's clearly <laughs> Gino with the veteran presence there getting the majority of the, the points down there. And I would guess along with they might be playing along with Kuleshov and Jones a lot as well. But, yeah, looking pretty impressive so far. So, let's see. Forwards, yeah, Gino, 32 points. 
Maddox Homer with 28 in 36 games, so he's clearly picked it up since the start of the episode. Yorgaho, of, of course, is injured and will be injured for the next three weeks or so still. <laughs> so missing a lot of time as the captain, but, you know, he did, he did a very nice job in the first 26 games there, and I'm sure when he gets back from injury, he will continue to do a very nice job. Todd Mayer with 25 and 34. Miller with 23, Point with 20, Pearson with 17, Robertson with 15, Furland with 10, Zanetti with 7. So he's had a goal in the past month. I believe last we checked he had 6 points. So, you know, as long as he's gaining overall, I don't want to send him, send him down because at this point we've burned a year of his entry-level contract. So, again, as, as long as we're getting growth from our young guys this year, that's all I really care about at the moment. Uh, Stahlberg, and, and again, if we make the playoffs, that's a nice, you know, nice cap to the season. But if we don't, then, you know, as long as we're developing our young guys, that's all that really matters for right now. Uh, Alex Kuleshov with 23 points. Jones with 23. Jamnov with 13. Dehan with 11. Staples with 2. And Vertanen. Still with one, but he is the defensive defenseman there, so you don't really expect him to get any points. And I guess we'll check out hits. How is our decor looking physically? So, actually, only Jones and Vertanen are really physical on this decor. Then Kuleshov is sitting there with 25 hits. Then Jamnov with 21. Staples with 18. Dehan with 9. So, more of an offensive defense core that we have here. Might have to consider changing a little bit of that going forward. But the thing is that three out of the four of these guys are 20 or younger. So we may have yet to see the best of guys like Vertanen and Zamnov and Staples physically. Right? Because they still got to grow into the frame. You know, Staples could very well grow an inch or two as well over the next couple of years. He could be 6'5", you know? Because obviously you're not done growing at, eight, at 18. I mean... You're close to done, but you're not, you know, you still got a little bit of growing to do. So he very well could turn into a physical force at some point. Uh, if, if he's played in the right situations, of course. And let's see. Face-offs. So Brayden Point with a 54.6. Pajo, 53.5. Pablo Pearson has done much better, 51.9. And Yorgajo, of course, hasn't had much of a chance to improve on that since he's been injured pretty much all of December and will continue to be injured for the next few weeks uh, physicality Miller with 85 hits Furland with 61 so I'm glad we kept Miller he's uh he's definitely a good piece to build off of or not build off of but you know he's a good supporter uh, for sure for guys like Aho and and Homer he'll clear the lanes for sure with the amount he hits, he's getting more than Furland. I mean, and and Furland, keep in mind, was the league leader in hits not too long ago. So, yeah, Miller, I'm glad we kept him. But that being said, if the right package does come along, I wouldn't be opposed to moving him, considering he still has four years left on his deal at 5.6 at 30 years of age. So if the right deal does come along, then he could be moved. But for right now, he is a solid player to have especially in the absence of Yorgaho. So, yeah, I mean, there's not much... Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay, so I think we know where the majority of Frederick Stahlberg's uh, penalty minutes come from. Oh, jeez. I didn't even see that on his... Uh, <laughs> on his past history there. I guess, yeah, past history doesn't show you fights. Well, I guess we know why now at this point. <laughs> Twelve fights for Frederick Stahlberg. So far at 22 years of age. So, yeah. Definitely not someone you want on the penalty kill or, or power play for that matter. Uh, but <laughs> still, you know, he's definitely imposing himself physically <laughs> as we see. And actually, I'm just going to make sure <laughs> he's not on the penalty kill. And even if he is, you know, it's not like the fighting takes someone off unless you get an instigator penalty and he actually is on the <laughs> penalty kill so 
Yeah, but you know what? It's been doing fine. Actually, Faz Leave is there as well. I might want to change that. Yeah, actually, I definitely want to change that. Unless, unless it's been solid for us this month, then I guess I'll change something up there. But let's let's just see how it's doing here. I mean, it it's on par with where it was before. It's eighty two point six. So, and you know what? We've been winning. <laughs> I'll just go with the flow here. Let's keep going in this simulation. We'll go up to the game against Vegas because I believe that is when Yorgaho is getting back from his injury. So, game against Florida. Yeah, I mean, we keep winning. I, I'm just not touching a thing, okay? Uh, until we start losing, if we even start losing, then I'm just not touching the thing. Even even if Faz Leave is on the is on the penalty kill, which he is, you know, it, it doesn't seem to be hurting us at the moment. So I'll just let the computer do its thing. So we have a shootout loss against Calgary, but for the most part, yeah, this month we've been solid. And then a two one loss against Minnesota. That was a good loss, I would say, if there's a such thing as that. But you know, it, it's it's good in that you know we didn't get blown out, and especially without Yorgaho, this is all impressive. This is all <laughs> incredibly impressive. And a trade for Schneider just popped up there, but uh, I'm not really interested in trading him at the moment, just given that, especially if, God forbid, Demko goes down, then we have another solid goaltender to replace him. Yorgaho is back, so welcome back, Captain, and we will take Faz leave out and put our Captain Yorgaho back in. Welcome back, and we'll move Stahlberg here. Pajot down here, point back to the second line, and Aho back on the first line. Let me just make sure that he is everywhere that he's supposed to be. Yep, he's on the penalty kill. Very nice. Three men penalty kill. That's all set. Yep, we're all good. And, and, it, and it appears, <laughs> I think Fazleev might have been on the fir first line three on three as well. Oh, geez. Uh, you know what? Again, it, it was working, so no need to <laughs> criticize that. But you know what? We had two losses as soon as Aho comes back. So maybe a, a little bit of, you know, as far as getting the rust out, he, he's definitely a little rusty at the moment, just given how long he's been out. But I'm sure he will get back to form in no time. Uh, yeah, there's a win against Vegas, loss against the Devils. So we're 31-12-4 at the moment. There's not much I want to do. I mean, sure, we've had a few losses here, th three losses in the past four games, but that's not necessarily significant of that this team is falling off. That may just be more of, again, Ajo's rusty and got to get the chemistry back. But, uh, yeah, I, I, and it could also just be a rough patch for the team. You never know. Every team goes through... A rough patch as Todd Mayer now <laughs> injured with an MCL sprain until March 2nd. Dude, these injury, these MCL sprains. This is the second MCL sprain this episode. So that's after the trade deadline, if I'm not mistaken. That's unfortunate. All of our young guys keep getting hurt. <laughs> so I guess we'll get Stahlberg back up here with Point and Furland. Unless I want to get Robertson... But then again, Gino is still our leading scorer, so I don't feel like breaking that third line up. We'll get fast leave back in there. <laughs> and you know what? He was on the penalty kill before, and Stahlberg, or you know what? No, no, no. That was Mayer. No, Mayer wasn't on the penalty kill. Right, because we, we put we replaced Mayer with Stahlberg, right? So it wasn't. Okay, so yeah, I don't want fast leave on the power play for sure. Point, Malkin, Jamnov, Dehan. I think it's either going to be Robertson or is Pearson on there? No, he's not. Pearson, Zanetti, maybe. He's a third line scorer at this point. He, yeah, you know what? Let's give Zanetti a chance on the power play. I want to see what he can do. And as far as the four man power play, Homer Ajo points. Put Gino there. He's been solid all year. Yep, get in there. And penalty kill is fine. Four on four. I mean, you know what? 
<laughs> it seemed to work last time, so you know what? We'll try it. Just for the sake of seeing if the simulation actually cares about Fazleaf being there. We'll put Zanetti over here with points on the three on three. And sure, you know what? Fazleaf on the shootout. Why not? At this point, <laughs> we'll try it. Chicago, 6 1 win. So, uh, solid way to end the month there. You got two wins in a row. 7-4 victory against the Rangers and a 6-1 win against the Chicago Blackhawks. So I feel like that last streak of losing three in the past four honestly was just a rough patch. Because at this point in the season is usually when the younger teams start to slide and we haven't done that yet. So as, as long as we can keep up whatever we're doing, we're just going to keep simulating. Edmonton is not looking too good so far this year. And, of course, they beat us 4-2. to two. Uh, Columbus, hold on, let's see. A first for a second, Lekkonen, and a third. No thank you. Columbus is going to be a 4-3 to three overtime win. So, again, as long as we can keep up a ratio, I, I would say two wins to one loss, we'll be fine. We'll definitely be fine, especially with how, with how weak our, div our division is. First and Dudas, yeah, no. <laughs> Edmonton definitely wants to get rid of Lekkonen, so I definitely don't want to take him on. Uh, shootout loss, so we got a point out of it against a division rival as well. But, you know what, at this point, I am not too concerned as long as we don't go on a, on a huge slide before the trade deadline, which it doesn't look like is going to happen. <laughs> but you never know. At this point, since I've said it, it might happen. So two solid wins in a row. There you go. Shootout win against Anaheim. Tampa, they're very good as well. Same record. Overtime loss. So we got a point out of a non-conference game. So you like to see that. St. Louis, 8-4 to four victory. Yeah, this, this team's fine. Honestly, even though our defensive core is technically weak and young, I think we just go forward with this. I really think we just go forward with this roster because it's just, it's gelled so well for whatever reason. Todd Mayer is fully healed, so we are back to full health once again. We'll get Faz Leave out of there in favor of Mayer. And now with Mayer coming back in, I really don't think there's any issue with, uh, with what we've been, with what we have accomplished so far with this roster. I mean, sure, you can point to Staples and Vertanen and Dahan all being you know, uh, rather weak, at least when it comes to overall. But in terms of the overall team play, we have been very, very solid. And I don't know if that's just because of Demko. <laughs> and it might be. It might very well be. 932 save percentage in 43 games. And then Schneider's picked up his play as well. 913. So, as far as making trades, I don't think we make any. I really don't. As long as we don't get any major injuries, <laughs> any more major injuries than we what we've already had with Ajo and Mayer. But still, this was mainly supposed to be a growth year. And at this point, it's turned into more than that. So I really can't complain. I, you know, we're... At this point, as long as we don't lose the rest of our games, we should be in the playoffs. And, you know, I, I want the young guns to be able to get playoff experience such as Zamnov, Vertan, and, and Staples. And the only way they're going to do that is by playing in the playoffs, you know, in, instead of a, a veteran filling in for one of them. And that may very well be what Hanu Vertanen needs. Yeah. See, he's a depth for depth defenseman at this point. And before he was a minor top two. So he's clearly growing. It's just, he's kind of taking his time. So, I see a lot of promise with this roster. We're clearly growing. Zanetti is now a third-line scorer. Yeah. No, I I don't want to make any changes. I do not want to make any changes. As long as, again, <laughs> we don't get any major injury here, which appears we have not. Yeah, let's, let's just go past the trade deadline. We're 41-16-6. I would be shocked. If we don't make the playoffs at this point, especially with how weak our division is, as we last checked. 
I mean, we'll check again here, but yeah, we're making the playoffs. <laughs> we have no reason to worry. We really don't. I mean, we're we're first in the Western Conference. In not not only the Central, but the entire Western Conference now. Yeah, no, we're we're making we're fine. <laughs> I mean, we're yeah, we're second in the entire league. We're fine. We don't need to make any changes. <laughs> so clearly Kuleshov, Jones, Demko, and Schneider have been doing a lot of heavy lifting on the back end, and they've handled it just fine. So we're going to just go the rest of the season. I don't care what anyone else thinks. This team, I, I feel like we can make a run. Even though we're young, we're definitely young. We're inexperienced, for sure. But you know what? <laughs> as long as we don't completely collapse here in the last part of the season, which, oh man, don't do this. Just don't, just, just don't do it. You, you know you... If, I swear to God, if this happens, <laughs> just get me like five more wins and then we should be fine, okay? <laughs> That's all I ask for. I'm not even asking asking for a perfect month here. Just just give me five wins in the next, next 15 or so games and we should be good to go in the playoffs. <laughs> uh, yeah, replace player. Florida, yeah, there you go. There's a win. So two wins. Just give me, you know, three more. I think we'll be fine if we get two more wins here after this one against Ottawa. We should be fine, <laughs> given how weak our division was. And Calvin Hahn is back. I don't remember him ever getting injured. I'm just going to double check here, but yeah, no, he's fine. Uh, Sodergran, I'm not going to do best lines for the AHL. Yeah, continue. He's not that important for the AHL. So uh, 2 nothing win. 4-3 three, three, three loss. Uh, Pablo Pearson has been injured with a broken nose. He'll be back before the playoffs starts, luckily. So we'll get Pajot on the third line now. And I guess, yeah, Fosleev <laughs> getting back in there. And you know what? We've been solid when Fosleev has, has come in there. So I, I, I'm not going to make any changes. And you know what, Fosleev? <laughs> He's on the penalty kill once again. I'm going to leave it alone. We've been just fine when Fosleev gets in there on the penalty kill. And we appear to be still just fine now. So, yeah, we're making the playoffs. We have no reason to worry. Yeah, we're good. Yep. Almost to 50 wins here. And there it is against the Vegas Golden Knights. 50 wins for your Wolfsburg Wolves. Like what I've done here with this roster. And Paulo Pearson is fully healed and available to play. So... Fosley, I mean, you've done well for us, buddy. You, you've done well for when you've had to get in there. And that's basically been for half the games this season <laughs> with the amount of injuries we've had. But uh, Pearson is a part of the future of this team, and he has to get in there. So, yeah, Pajo, back to where you were. And uh, all the lines should be fine. Yeah, there you go. All right, so New Jersey, overtime loss. Win against the Rangers. And, yeah. Uh, Robertson, I don't remember taking him out, so we'll just continue. Chicago, 5-2 victory. There you go. one nothing loss against Edmonton. So Edmonton seems to be our kryptonite here. 3 uh, nothing loss against Columbus. But you know what? Still, incredible season for your Wolfsburg Wolves with 111 points on the season. Almost got the President's Trophy. We were third in the entire league. There's Tampa. There's Buffalo. And then your Wolfsburg Wolves. So solid season. Gino with 71 points. His number. He got his number in amount of points on the third line. What a guy. <laughs> As a bottom six potential as well. 37 goals and 37 assists for Gino. And then Yorgaho. 30 goals and 31 assists. 61 points in 64 games. So he is definitely worthy of the captaincy. For this team, Maddox Homer with a 27 goal season. I believe that is a career high for points. Yes, it is. So, Homer had a nice season as well. JT Miller, 55 points. Kuleshov with 51. So, Kuleshov appears to be a steady 50 point guy, which is good to know. Jones with 48. So, the combination of Jones and Kuleshov just deadly for other teams. 
Uh, Braden Point with 45. Pablo Pearson with 37. Solid first season for us. He's actually a fourth line forward, apparently, according to his role at the moment. So I I don't see him as a fourth line forward, especially since he just got 37 points. I think that'll go up back up to at least a third line score. There's no way he's a fourth line forward. Uh, Jason Robertson with 36 points. Mayer with 35 and 67. Zanetti with 34 in his rookie year. So pretty impressive year for Aaron Zanetti. Furland with 25. Zamnov with 24. Dehan with 19. Stahlberg with 18. Pajot with 17. Carl Staples with a 10-point rookie season. So it still has that top six defenseman role. So as long as he's growing over the offseason, I really could care less how many points he has this season. Especially since we just won our division and our conference for that matter. Fazliev with 7 points in 38 games. Vertanen with 3. He's still a depth defenseman, so he's he's getting there. He's getting there. And then as far as goaltenders go, yeah, Thatcher Demko. <laughs> 931 save percentage. He definitely helped out this year. 9-11 for Corey Schneider in 30 games. So they were both solid. They were both very, very solid throughout the year. And let's check out the AHL. Kirk, Zelda, dude, that's a main look for rookies. Josh Williams, he's already 23, 77 overall. He's looking like another Dominic Bach at this point. A slightly better version of Dominic Bach, but still he might. I'm not sure if, at this point if he's going to make the NHL. Better Kundertek with the depth defenseman role, so he might be ready soon, as soon as next year, maybe. Kale Addison, Grief, Walker, Sodergrand. Again, mainly looking for rookies here. Pedersen with 14 points, 12 goals. Wolf, Baronek, okay, that's it for that. Goaltenders, what about Rodin? Rodin hasn't been too great, but hopefully he can bring that save percentage up there. It looks like he had, yeah, his, his save percentage has been well below 900 in every year of the simulation so far. So that's quite unfortunate there, as hopefully that improves. But you know what? Solid all-around team effort this year. Actually, you know, I don't know why I backed out. I'm going to go back into the player stats here and check out the plus-minus. Kuleshov and Jones, of course, plus 41, plus 40 shots. So Gino with the most, 232. Maddox Homer, 225. All the guys over 200. Kuleshov, Aho, all the guys you expect are three draft picks and Gino. And then shooting percentage, Gino with a... 15.9, Aho with 14.2, power play points, Aho had the most despite losing 18 games off of his season, he still had the most power play points on our team, so he's definitely worthy of that captaincy, uh, shorthanded points, Jones, Miller, Pablo, Pearson, all with three, face-off percentage, let's see, Pearson with a 51.8, Pajot, 51.8. Point, 51.1. Aho, basically 50%. So he got better coming back from injury. Hits, JT Miller, 173. Jones, uh, Homer, Pearson, Aho, Furland, Stahlberg, Robertson, all over 100. Vertanen was almost there. And then let's take a look at the ratios. May Mayer, dude, Mayer. <laughs> 97 takeaways to 29 giveaways. What a player. What a gem that we found in the draft. Holy moly. I was not expecting that kind of season out of Todd Mayer. That was in the fourth. We took him in the fourth round of 2021. What a gem. Maddox Homer with 74 to 32. Cannot complain there. Ajo 64 to 44. JC Miller could have done better 62 62. And then Jason Robertson, 57-47, good. Malkin, 56-32, very good. Kuleshov, very good for a defenseman, 56-62. Pablo Pearson with 53-58, could have done a little bit better. Braden Point, 49-48, so basically even there. Stahlberg, 40-27, so he's good defensively, at least to uh, to make up for the amount of penalty minutes he gets for fights. Oh, goodness. 162. He probably had like 20 fights at least. I can't wait to check that out. Furland with a 38 to 43. And then Jones with a 37 to 75. Zanetti with a solid defensive rookie year. 
35 to 33. Uh, Vertanen, that was unfortunate, 33 to 83. But, you know, he's still growing. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt for the future. Tahan, 31 to 50. Pajot, 27 to 24. Zamnov with a 26 to 69. And Fazliv, 8 to 18 to 30. So even though he wasn't that great defensively, he still, for some reason, we we win we won games whenever he was in the lineup. So I, you know, I can't complain. Staples fourteen to fifty two. That'll get better as he gets older. He's only nineteen years of age. He was eighteen for the majority of the year. So again, you gotta give him the benefit of the doubt. Oh my goodness, twenty five fights. <laughs> twenty five fights for Frederick Stahlberg. Oh my goodness, and one fight for Carl Staples. So yeah, Stahlberg clearly <laughs> was what this team needed apparently in order to get going as far as bringing a spark to the team because no one else besides Staples had to fight at all 25 fights for Frederick Stahlberg oh my goodness all right goaltenders I mean yeah we already checked them out I don't know why I went back to goaltenders so we'll check out the team stats for the season and then we'll see who we have in the playoffs so let's see. Goals for per game. Second in our division, 2.94. Goals against per game. First in our division uh, by a long shot. That, that, seeing Chicago screwed me up there for a second. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> no. Uh, we are first in our division, 2.29. Winnipeg is second with a 2.47. So we're way ahead in first. So that's good. Power play. Second in our division, 21.4. And penalty kill, third in our division, 82.2. Not too shabby. And five go shorthanded goals. And we were solid in our last 10. We were solid away. We were solid home. Really nothing to complain about there. Really nothing. Can't check out the awards yet. Playoff tree can't check. Uh, yeah, I mean, I believe that's basically it. I mean, we'll check out the draft class because <laughs> we didn't do that at all here this season. Let's just hope the, the scouts did their job. So Ryder McDonald going first overall. I don't think we'll have to worry about picking first overall this year. Frank Feichel, uh, Damian Dillman, Devin Smoskowitz. <laughs> I probably butchered that one big time. Philippe Theodore, Randy Dalton, Benjamin Roloff, Darren Baumick, Louis Triff, Daniel Grolo, Francisco Alsner, Harrison Trotter, Reed Spiller, Donovan Smits, Elijah Wheel, Yuri Chubisov, Jacob Denisov, Donald Corson, Radoslav Melikar, Preston Engeland, Per Almquist, Nicholas Corey, Jackson Wall, I don't even know where I am right now, 23. <laughs> okay, L Lumala, Yandel, Rodin, Pitkinen, Vasha, Casper and Kid going in the top 30. Let's see if there's any gems going late. So you, they got medium elite in Smiths going 14. So if we could get the 14th overall pick or something like that, and then pick up Smiths, that'd be a that'd be a nice trade there. Because I can guarantee you we're not getting the 14th overall pick naturally with our own pick. Let's see if there's any top sixes going in the later rounds. Is a low elite there, 276 Cornette. And then, as far as uh, you, you got a high top six going in the top five, Damian Dillman. And Osner is a top six, Wheel top six, Corson top six. All these guys picking in and Yandel could be realistic pickups for your Wolfsburg Wolves in the later round, uh, later round one. So uh, yeah, let's just see what we have in the playoffs. It should end up being... It should end up being... Well, actually, the playoffs are not set in the Pacific yet, so we can't really make a, uh, a prediction on that at the moment. So we'll just see what we have here. And it will be the LA Kings in round number one. All right, so... Uh, yeah, that'll just about do it for this one. So in the East, we have Tampa versus Washington, Buffalo versus Ottawa, Carolina versus New Jersey, New York versus New York, and in the West, we have Arizona versus Calgary, 
Anaheim versus Vegas and Minnesota versus Winnipeg and then your Wolfsburg Wolves versus the LA Kings. So with that, I will see you guys in the next one.